stay and we not only get leave but there for two weeks you have a nurse coming to your house it's not a it's not a luxury it's not something i need it is something we deserve today's podcast is very special it answers some basic questions about motherhood about human beings the way they treat each other do you know that most people are now afraid of having a child because they don't have proper care they cannot afford to take care of a child they don't have the right support what is the effect of this the effect of this is that the population of the planet is declining we know that a lot of countries are facing a population issue but the deeper problem here is that people are afraid to have a child they are afraid to get into a relationship and nurture a child's future so this is not a small problem with this the number of aging population will increase and the number of younger population will reduce this is creating a huge imbalance and this is all happening because there is no proper care for a new mom or a new dad do you know that not only women but men also face postpartum depression postpartum depression is a phase where after the baby is born you are overwhelmed with so many responsibilities that you start suffering some mental health issues and the funny part of our system is it treats human beings like objects you know you take it out of one system and you put it in another system and you're supposed to function absolutely fine it is not like that the founder of newmom.me pooja kapoor makes it so clear that at many levels our healthcare system is extremely primitive we have big bills to pay we get scared of all the expenses we have to incur and new parents are pushed to go to work they don't get proper paid leave and think about single parents who don't have support to take care of the child for pick up drop off feeding the child uh, and then they have to take on meetings they have to think about work life balance this is a lot for a new parent to take care of our healthcare system is very primitive we need health care not sick care we wait until these new parents become sick mentally or physically and then we give them care so pooja's podcast Uh, brings out her startup's vision and mission which prevents this kind of uh, sickness of mental and physical sickness which is which is rampant in new parents so without further ado let's get started with the podcast and let's change our thinking about parenting and how we can make things better for new parents Hello and welcome to another episode of Pitch Cafe podcast a place where talent meets coffee this is a place where really talented founders get roasted toasted or boosted today we have a super duper talented founder and i became a big fan of her just within 5 minutes of my conversation with her her name is pooja kapoor and she's out there to rethink postpartum care for women we think after the baby is born the mother is supposed to learn how to manage the baby it is a god given gift and become super normal within 2 weeks this is the narrative which has been told us told by our employers told by our healthcare system but there is pooja one daring bold woman who wants to change this narrative i simply got shivers in my spine when i heard the audacity of her vision and how genuine and authentic her care for the mothers and postpartum care is she has one disruptive idea after another but her startup is called newmom.me i cannot wait but only get started with the podcast uh, let me introduce pooja kapoor Pooja welcome to the podcast. Thank you it's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. So Pooja I loved your pitch on newmom.me I want to get started learning all about your startup but before that let's uh 
get on with your early journey who is pooja and where does she come from and how did she start newmom.me this amazing startup which is meant to provide great postpartum care for new mothers yeah thank you vidha happy to share about myself so my journey began in a very small town in india called muradabad it's part of state uttar pradesh which is famous for taj mahal very close to delhi though it is very close to delhi but it is still very very far culturally in terms of you know how things run there so it's a very traditional town small town i grew up in a big family in india if we have a joint family we'll be like 20 25 people living under the same roof so the way i grew up is learning it was a very traditional family though my family is educated but i grew up learning or seeing that oh you are 21 you are supposed to you know follow certain subjects in school at 21 you find a right guy you don't find a right guy finds you and then you get married <laughs> and it, and i used to i remember you know i was like very very little my first memory is like challenging all these traditional norms like, like oh i would ask my like dad he had a middle name so i said how come i don't have a middle name my dad said oh girls don't get a middle name i said no that's not fair i started calling myself i used his middle name I said, okay, my name is Pooja Nandan Kapoor, and my dad was like, how? I said, no, but so you know, I always grew up, you know, questioning those beliefs and say, why can't I do this thing? Oh, boys are supposed to do that. No, I said, how am I different? So you know, that's how I grew up, and I gave my parents a very hard time. And <laughs> Because, you know, graduated from IIT. How was your journey in IIT? I mean, uh, I it's it, there are so few women there, and uh, what was it like? What was the environment like? So yeah, that's actually very interesting because um, I was the first woman in my family to actually leave my house and even go outside for study. So I was like super excited there. Again, IIT was that time even you know very male dominated, but I was very fortunate. I went to IIT Roorkee and the culture there and the learning there and the friends which I made there for lifetime. But definitely, you know, it was a very steep learning curve for me because I left home and then I'm like in this new world. So. but it really laid the foundation for my eventual success because i went to iit then i did my mba then i started working in india in 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 mumbai at abbott laboratories and i was the first woman in my family to actually start working in a corporate world and the journey till there was very hard because i got a lot of pushback in terms of oh if you study too much there you won't find a boy <laughs> to marry you because you're overqualified so yeah. you know but i was like i have to do it and that is one thing you know i'm very proud i'm very i have this perseverance like i never give up it's like if i face an adversity i'm like okay i'll figure out something so which has really helped me a lot so that was my journey went to id did my mba uh, started working and it and i'm very proud of the fact that it really changed the trajectory of women in my family because after i went to work my family started realizing the value of educating women so my younger sister she's a lawyer now and i have a lot of cousins who have gone to college so yeah so that was yeah so this is a fantastic journey so so you have this rebel streak from yes. right <laughs> so you know you know why not women or why should we do this so yeah. i like that so my first take away from the podcast is maintain that spirit of questioning because as a founder you will have to go through many twists and turns and this ability to question anything which puts you down or which brings you down is going to take you a long way especially for women entrepreneurs so so with that pooja after uh, looking at your amazing childhood and your uh, you know iit uh, stint and your mba uh, career so you moved to abbott and after that what was that point where you realized i'm going to quit my corporate job and i'm going to do this startup uh, you know you you felt this need to start new mom.me So it is again very personal. I grew up in, like I told you, you know, I grew up in this traditional family, and I always saw child, a child birth as very, like a spiritual experience. You know, babies born, there is celebration. Moms are taken care of. You know how in in our culture, it's like you get forty days of rest, and then it's like focus is on mother. So yeah. when my son is born, I my mindset was that oh, I'm going to have a similar experience. I saw my cousins uh, growing up with, but what happened is. here unfortunately like mothers are supposed to do it all on their own especially new mothers here you mean in the united states in the united states or yes. other countries also in uk australia do you think it's happening everywhere 
I think US is the primary culprit. I'll tell you because I have spoken to women in Canada. People, women there get, you know, 12 months of maternity leave. There is a provider who, you, who used to live in Sweden. Believe it or not, there you not only get leave, but there for two weeks, you have a nurse coming to your house every day cooking for you, taking care wow. of you. This yeah. is the only country where I have heard or I have experienced actually is that you come home. I remember, you know, my first vivid memory, I came home with my son from the hospital. First thing as I did is I went into the kitchen to get some food. And, you know, and so that hit me really hard, that you know, that loneliness and totally being unprepared and kind yeah. of women expected to do it on their own. Or if you ask for help, you are considered weak or not so independent. And, you know, each one has a different story. And so I'm talking about, you know, there might be women who can do it all. But if you look at most of the women, this is like such an important, you have given birth to a new life. And here yeah. what happens is if you ask for postpartum support. Yeah. For me, and I said, you know, it's not a, it's not a luxury. It's not something I need. It is something we deserve. Okay, I want to repeat this. Oh, Pooja Kapoor, founder of newmom.me, makes this statement. Postpartum care is not a need. It's not a luxury. It's a necessity. And women deserve it. So this is a statement. I'm going to think about it all the time. And whenever I have an opportunity, I'm going to uh, contribute to this. Cause. So, so Pooja, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I came home and, you know, it was like this surreal experience when I'm home with this newborn and I have no support. I am not only taking care of this newborn when I'm all stitched up, but I'm also supposed to cook. I'm supposed to take care of home. And that was such a jarring experience and eye opener for me that, oh my God, I am totally alone. Yeah. And like I said, you know, here, if you look at all the medias and I really want to you know change that representation of new motherhood if you look at new mothers you have this fancy glowing pretty mom with a happy baby no it doesn't work like that that's not the reality you know what happens it also sets the expectations for dads because dads have never heard that before so for them they're like oh how hard it could be until they go through it so for so, me, uh, yeah. there's one thing you know, a conversation with me earlier about how much support c-level executives who are the poster boys poster childs uh, for this uh, post maternity uh, you know uh, a phase you know they become ceos and they get to work within two weeks but what is the kind of support they have and we are common people what do we have you know can you tell a little bit about that particular instance you were sharing with me yeah so it's very interesting you know when you um when you talk to it's, it's when you talk to different people and how they receive this information. Like when you talk to a woman, like people like you and me, who have to, you know, who have to work, you know, you don't have a choice. You cannot just stay at home, especially in India, it's so expensive. Their yeah. experience is challenging because not only they have to figure out about how to take care of baby, take care of themselves, but they have to also go back to work really soon. You yeah. go back to work and then most of the time at work, you don't have support. People don't understand. Women are being told, oh, I want you to hit the ground running. Yeah. And I have heard this from multiple women. So those are women like you and me, but there are people like men and women who can probably open a nursery in their office or then who can have three people supporting them. So yeah. for them, if this is not the reality for them, it's like, oh, I went back to work because I had all this support system. What I, am, I want to represent is like common people like you and me who have to work. And I know some people might say, oh, you have a choice not to work. That's a different discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know how women is, this is, you are giving birth to a new life. So nothing can be more important than that. And, and Vida, there are so many studies now which indicate that if mom does not have postpartum support, how they suffer from postpartum depression, how they, yeah. their relationship with their baby and their family changes, how there's yeah. a strain in their relationship and 43% of women either run down or opt out of work. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'm not just saying that, hey, it's a need. It's a very personal, it is a personal need. But imagine the impact it has on society, on the productivity of society, the amount of spending happens on healthcare, you know, to treat all these issues. And how much corporations suffer because you have this hugely talented women doesn't have support and doesn't come back to work. So it is not a very individual thing. I think the 
overall impact it has on society is huge fantastic so you know i want to uh, i i want to just quote some of the amazing things you said uh in our earlier conversation here and bring it in context you said uh, you are changing the narrative for postpartum narrative what is the status quo and why are you changing the narrative in what way are you changing the narrative yeah so status quo is you have a baby two weeks go back to work four weeks be pre pregnancy size be fit we should be able to do everything and don't complain because you are privileged i understand your privilege to be a mother so that's a current scenario where don't complain about it don't talk about it do it on your own or sometimes even asking for help is considered a sign of weakness weakness yes that's yes. the narrative i want to change that no first of all we don't have to do it alone you have to have a village let's provide you that village because that's not only good for mother it's good for baby it's good for family it's good for society we are not we are social human beings so this individualistic approach where you can do it all it doesn't work yeah. as a society if mother suffer everyone else get that so that's a narrative about like really bring the raw motherhood out talk yeah. about it say i had a challenge i'm not ashamed of it you know right. it took me a while to start sharing my story that i had postpartum depression or how i struggled yeah. i want every woman to have that independence and ease come and speak about their journey and, and get help yeah fantastic and if you would like to mention what is the amount of pre seed funding you're looking for what's the kind of uh, you know the dollar value of it we are looking anything between 2 to 2.5 million and okay. that yeah and we have a runway of you know for for 12 to 8 months 12 to 18 months you already have 12 to 18 months yes uh, you already yeah. have it and you're looking for 2.5 million dollars to scale up uh, and uh, you know uh, higher sales and you know expand your services there's a product market fit and there's a lot of demand and you're growing by word of mouth so that's yes. a great yeah that's and you know we are totally bootstrapped we are post revenue believe it or not mm-hmm. and uh, and and very kind of the beauty of our platform is like how people talk about go to market and this and that for us it's just it's kind of this network effect i would say a viral effect where mom comes to your platform recommends other mom a provider okay. comes to your platform recommend recommends other moms and other providers so i'm part of you know these different facebook groups and yeah. i always tell moms hey this is and i am telling you it like it just makes my day mom yeah. said like, oh my god puja thank you for launching this service i have moms from new york who have called me and said when are you launching in new york you know i need your help so you yeah. know so, yeah all right on that note we uh, come to the end of this amazing session on pitch cafe puja you're truly a role model to women i am so thankful you came to the show i will stay tuned uh, on uh, newmom.me all the developments and uh, happy to connect you with any resources what is the best way for an investor or a prospective new hire uh, or a partner to reach you how can they reach you just email me at puja p u j a at newmom.me for a few guys who are watching this who were inspired by puja's uh, podcast whether you're an investor or uh, a prospective hire or any kind of partner you know where to reach puja and her startup is called newmom.me a disruptive startup in the postpartum care space but i think at many levels it's disrupting all the uh, deficits in our current healthcare system with that thank you so much and uh, i wish you all the very best with your next startup endeavor thank you vidha it was a pleasure to having you and thank you for giving us this opportunity to spread our message spread the word around i think we need more people like you to make this conversation mainstream to make to enable every mom to just and come and have a conversation like this so thank you so much for your platform as well thank you